Prisms, prisms everywhere. Yes, welcome to Mr. Douglas's math channel. Today we are looking at surface area and volume of prisms. Are you ready? Here we go. So today we are looking at prisms. And I love looking at prisms. It's a cool word to say. And basically we get to draw in 3D. So that's what we're doing. We're moving from 2D. So no longer are we just looking at a regular rectangle. Now we are looking at a prism, which is going to be in three dimensions. So it's always fun to kind of draw these kinds of things. Um, I've always, yeah, I, I find it really fascinating to see how people look at these, and I like drawing them. I actually, it takes a little while to kind of get used to that. So hopefully you can kind of see how I've just drawn that prism there. And uh, we're going to take a look at basically the surface area of a prism. So the first thing we're going to look at is the surface area. And the next part is going to be, of course, the actual volume. So remember, surface area is going to be in, I mean, maybe not centimeters, but we're going to say it's going to be in units squared. So that's pretty important to know. And when we're talking about volume, so volume is like if I took this uh, this rectangular prism right there, let's say we had a rectangular prism, and I filled it with water, and I put water inside it. That's what we're talking about, so the volume, and that's going to be in units cubed. Okay, so units cubed. That's how we do those kinds of things. So that's what we're we'll looking at. And yeah, let's just get into it. Should we do, what do we want to do first? Do you want to do surface area? Uh, okay, sure. So I heard that. I heard you guys talk to your screen. That was exciting. So let's take a look at surface area. And the big thing, so surface area is always a tricky one. You want to open up. So kind of like step one, right? So step one, you want to open up your, what we call is a, uh, a net in math. But basically you want to open up your net or just your shape. And this is always going to be the, the challenging part of trying to figure out exactly what your nets look like. Because every single prism is going to look a little bit different. And you basically have to get a little bit of practice at it. And once you can visualize it, everything is going to be a lot easier. So let's just take a look at um, which one should we do first. Let's do... Uh, what's a good one? Um, how about your rectangle? How about the one that we just did? Or just uh, any kind of a, a QB kind of thing. So the first one we do. So the first one is a cube. So what does a cube look like? So the net, if I had to open up a cube. So this is a cube. And a cube is basically a square, right? So how many sides does it have? First off, it it has six sides. That's a good thing to know. Think of a dice, right? Think of a dice, or a die. I guess it's called die, right? Don't die, die, but you know, die, <laughs> dice. And this is basically what it looks like. So you have four sides like this, uh, nice and even. So I'll try and draw it like that. And then you're going to have uh, two more, also the exact same. So imagine that actually you do these as perfect squares. This is kind of what it looks like. Okay, so that's what it looks like. That's the net of what a cube would look like. And basically, if you're just given a piece of information, so let's just say you were told that um, this was, you know, like, I don't know, two centimeters, right? So it's two centimeters, so everything is like two, two, et cetera, like that. If you had to go and figure out the, the surface area of it, all you would be doing is... Uh, multiplying that, so this would be like length times width. So that would be just two times two. And math teachers always want to see your work, right? So that's four. So that's the area. So you figured out that one of these, one of those is going to be four, like that. And then of course, how many are there? There's six of them. So the surface area would be 24 centimeters squared. So you're always going to be breaking things down a little bit when you're doing the surface area. 
um, if we had a, a different shape. So let's say we had our um, kind of a, a triangular prism. So if you had something that looked like this, so you can try and draw this. So you always start drawing a triangle and then you just kind of draw two lines like this. And you draw one line connecting it kind of on an angle, the same angle as, as this line right here. And if you want to be really, really fancy, you can add in the, the dots. So your dots for these ones, I believe, they kind of go um, down to here and then across. So it kind of looks like that. And you can go across to it like this. So can that, that help you kind of see it like there? There you go. So for this one, when you go and you open up this net, so this net is going to be a little bit more um, interesting to kind of see. You basically, I don't know if you can see it, you basically get your three rectangles. So it depends on what kind of triangular prism it is, but you basically get three rectangles. And then you're going to have your actual triangle part here. So these are the kind of the classic ones that you have to know. And then you have to go and just basically say, okay, well, what kind of numbers are you given? So if you were given that this was, say, 8, so this was 8, and maybe, maybe this was a um, equilateral, so this was an equilateral, and you said this was 4, let's say it's 4, that's pretty exciting you would also need to be given one more thing. Usually they'll give you one more thing. They'll give you the, the height. So if I did, what's a good color? Maybe some blue. They have to give you the height here. And I'll say the height was, I don't know, five. Uh, then you can start to go and fill in these ones. So I always like to go and draw my nets and then just kind of start filling in numbers here. And we know that this was eight. And then as you opened it up, because this was an equilateral triangle, which was super, super friendly on my part, uh, you know that these are gonna be four. So these are all kind of fours. And this might help you a little bit. So as I'm drawing this, so these are all gonna be four. And then you can start going and calculating stuff. So um, I would like to draw little pieces. So remember you had a giant rectangle that was basically an 8 by 4. So we know that we multiply those two together and we get 32. And we know that we have three of them. So you're going to times that by 3. I'm going to get 96. We also have a triangle. That is a 4 by 5. And we know that it's half times the base times the height. So that's going to be 10. But there is two of them. So I'm left with these. Now I take this number, I take these numbers, and I'm going to go and add them up. So somewhere on my paper, I'm always looking for if I'm a math teacher, I'm looking that somewhere we're going to get those kinds of numbers. And I think we got 116. Is that 116? I think so. And we're going to say, because I was lazy, I didn't tell you what the units were. I'm just going to say units squared. So those are some of the, the classic kind of um, surface area ones. I'm trying to think of some other ones. I mean, you start getting some really, really complex ones. You can get into like octagon ones, pentagon ones, um, hexagons, it all kind of depends. But opening it up is kind of the key. I'm not going to go through all of them right now. But just try and envision what does it actually look like. Okay, so spend some time working on that. Oops, don't need those, don't need those. There we go. Let's talk about the volume because volumes can be a little bit different for a prism because we can have one formula for all prisms. Woohoo! We love formulas. Um, and the volume is equal to A times H, where 
A is the cross section. And H is the height. And this works for any kind of prism. I'm going to give you a bunch of different examples for this now. How does that sound? You pumped? Okay. I'm going to try to use different colors, because uh, I think colors are really key. So if you don't have any colors, you want to go and steal colors from your uh, little sister or little brother. <laughs> Uh, and or maybe you have them in your pencil case right now because you want to be using colors because it's going to make your life easier especially when you try and hear what I mean by the cross section so let's just do a really really basic one let's start with what we just did actually we're going to do the uh, triangular prism so remember how you draw these you draw a triangle and then you draw a line going kind of on an angle like that and you connect it just like this and then if you want to be fancy, which we love to be fancy, we can add little dots. And the dots kind of start from this point, and they kind of go across here, and up, and then across. Okay. Now, when we're talking about the cross section, this is your cross section. Okay, so that is A. This is the cross section, kind of like the face of it. So you figure out the area of that, and you multiply it by the height, which should be given to you. So that's basically what you are kind of, of getting. Um, maybe you had a different kind of triangle. I'll show you a different one. So you have the same idea. So let's say you had a... Maybe I, I stood that up on its end, like on the actual face. So if you had to draw this one, you draw you draw a house, the starting of a house. Does that look like a house? Hopefully, right? This looks like a house. But now I'm gonna add some dots in to make it not look like a house. And I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna go dots and then dots. See how that kind of just changed everything from a house to a kind of a triangular prism? You see that? And if I was going to go and say, what is the A for this one? Um, can you see what the A would be? The A would be, well, you, have, you have two versions of it really, right? You have this, or you could say it's this, right? But this is the A. I'm saying over here in case you're like, hey, what about the other one? Yeah, so these are both the A's, right? So those are the A's, um, like that. Let's stick to triangles because triangles, let's say you had um, a triangle that looked like this. So let's say you had one that looked like this. It was kind of like a right angle one here. So you draw a right angle triangle. That's cool. And then I'm going to draw two lines kind of, again, coming out this way. And a little bit of a slant this way. I'm going to add in my dots because the dots are pretty cool. I'm going to come straight down from here and straight across to here and straight down to there. Now for this one, what is my face going to be? My A, my big A. Let's stick to that nice green color. The A would be like this. And again, it's, it's also over here, right? Because they're the same. So that's what we're looking at. And we're given a height. Now, should we go and add some numbers in these ones and actually do some questions? Yes. Yes, we should. Uh, let's you with this one right here. Um, let's say that this was 5. And this was 8. And yeah, this is a good one. And this is six. I'll say. Okay. So again, let's go figure out the area of that big A and then multiply it by your height. So let's figure out the area of this. So remember, it's just base times height divided by two. So eight times five divided by two. Uh, what's that going to be? 20. And then times it by the other 6. By this part right here. So that would give you 120. Now it's a units cubed. Like that. Okay. Mm, 
How about we do... Well, I don't know. Do you want to do... We could do this one over here, I guess. Does that help? Would that help you? Little math padawans? Sure. Mm, let's say this was, I don't know, 7. This was 10. And let's say you needed to be, you would need to be given this part right here, right? You would need that. And I'll say it's 4. So again, you want to figure out the area of, of this, which is 7 times 4 divided by 2. So that's going to be 14. And you need to multiply it by that 10 right there, that 10. Because that 10 is the H. So that would be, what, 140? Units cubed. Okay, that's the idea there. And I'll give you one more. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to redraw this stuff. Let's get rid of that. Let's do one more, because it's a really good one. I like it. Let's keep to the same colors, I guess. Um, let's say you had this, like, I'm actually going to draw a house now. So when you're drawing a house, hmm, here we go. We're going to draw an open kind of container. And we're going to draw another cube this way. This will make more sense in a second. A little bit of an angle. You see that? A little bit of an angle. Then we're going to draw another kind of like a, a rhombus there. And then we're going to connect these two. Yeah. See, I just drew a house. That was pretty cool, right? Then I'm going to add a dotted line just to make life a little bit easier. And it's kind of like that. Okay, so do we all kind of see this? Do you see this now? Okay. So again, what is your cross section? Your cross section for this one is actually going to be. There's a good color. A triangle plus a rectangle. Let's add in some numbers now. So you have six here. We'll say this is six. And I'll say this is eight. And this is five. And right here, I'll say that's four. So we're going to get that area of that cross section. So the area of the cross section is, is interesting. It's made up of this plus this, isn't it? So you're going to do that, and then you're going to times it by the height. And the height for this one is going to be 5. And timesing it by 5, which is the height. Which always confuses kids. Imagine if I turn that so this green part is on the on your surface, like on your desk or on the ground. So that's what we're kind of doing. So, okay, let's figure out the area of the triangle. So that's uh, base times height divided by two. So eight times four um, divided by two. So that's going to be sixteen. Plus this is length times width. Six times eight, which is 48. So I'm adding 16 and 48. That's 64. I think so, right? So that's 64. And whoop, timesing that by 5, so that's going to be 320 units cubed. So that's just giving you an idea of doing um, some some questions for prisms, surface area, you got to open it up into a net. And for volume, you need to figure out the area of the cross section and then times it by the height. Good luck in all your geometry adventures. Thanks everybody for tuning in for another edition of Math with Mr. Douglas. Hopefully you learned a little bit about prisms, formulas, how to apply them, and of course those really fun nets. Happy fishing everyone.